Hello friends, Patrick here. Today we're going to be talking about a question that's been asked quite a lot of times in my past videos and it's specifically around the HFC NBN rollout. Basically, we're talking about cable, which is actually the coaxial fiber cable. Uh, that's the name of it, and it's actually a much more powerful cable than just your standard copper. And we'll get to that in a second, but let's talk about what it has been, the history of it, and what it is today. So first of all, the coaxial cable, well, it's known as just cable. It came out in the 1990s. In America, over 60 million homes are actually connected via this cable, so it's pretty standard over there, and it gets great speeds on internet. But it started off as just TV. Basically, paid cable was the way you'd get lots of great channels, TV, uh, movies, and whatnot in America. And when it landed in uh, Australia and, and New Zealand and really the rest of the world, it, wa it did not have the biggest uptake. Not as many people got connected to this HFC cable. And those that did had a pretty good experience, especially due to the fact that most satellites didn't have the best quality at the time, uh, and so you were able to get your paid TV really, really well connected. Most of the time, the homes that were connected were actually multiple homes, so strata homes, hotels, or apartments. And the only uptake was about 4 million homes in, in all of Australia. So it's not the biggest amount of people, it's not something that goes, oh, there's so many people with HFC. So it's been really on the back end of all topics about NBN, because most of the population in Australia is on copper networks. So this cable, the HFC cable, it was used for paid TV. Sooner or later, they figured out they need another way to connect people to the actual internet, and they decided that the, this cable could actually be uh, used for it. So, in fact, most homes in America use cable for their internet. All you have to do is get a little splitter, it splits off the TV signal and your data signal into two ports, and off you go. You connect your modem and you can still have your paid TV. And in fact, you can do the same thing here in Australia if you have paid cable. If you don't, you just straight go into your modem, as you can see here. So, what's the benefit versus copper? Well, copper is a much thinner cable. It has a lot less shielding around it, and it can go less distance. So as you see in this graph over here, you can see that the actual cable speed changes quite dramatically as, as the distance gets on. And copper isn't very good at this, and so it's, it's just terrible at it. So people with fiber to the node will get much worse speeds on copper if they're very far away from the node. Same with the curb, but less so because it's much closer to your home. HFC cable, on the other hand, don't suffer as much from this issue. And you can send a lot more signal, or not so much more signal, but at longer distances at the same power level and therefore you might not lose as much speed. So if you are connected to the HFC and you're very far away from the node on your street, you might actually perform much better than the same person with a copper connection. So in the 90s, the connection was called DOCIS 1.0 and people could get the speeds about 8 megabits, um, which was actually insanely fast for the time. And as upgrades started to happen, we had version 2, 3, and 3.1, which NBN Co. said they're going to be implementing in 2017. So DOCIS uh, was actually supposed to be getting speeds of about 500 megabits per second. The speed isn't really affected by the cable itself, but more of the hardware behind it. And it is said that to get speeds like that, the hardware that you have to implement is very expensive. This is just a rumor that I read online, and it might not be true, but to actually connect the HFC, it's a little bit more expensive, but a lot less work, because you just put a node in and off you go. So price-wise, your plans won't change. It might be a few dollars difference depending on ISPs, but most will provide the same plan on copper as they will on HFC. And in fact, HFC will perform better in most situations. However, not everybody has actually HFC. Out of those 4 million people, um, there was a point where the government actually paused connecting homes to the HFC. There was this weird moment in time where they said, no, we're not connecting anymore because we've got satellite, we've got the 4G, 5G, and NBNs just around the corner. But out of those 4 million homes, only 2 million were actually connected. So what NBN's going to do now is connect the rest of those 2 million people with very minimal work and have around 4 million people total on the HFC 
bandwagon. Now I had an experience with HFC uh, about four years ago. I was at a friend's house. Uh, they had uh, we had a LAN, we played some games, and they had HFC connection to their home through their cable. It was an older area, but um, they had some sort of connection done. Whatever it was, their speeds were absolutely incredible at the time. Most of the time, everybody else is an ADSL 2 plus, and this house had HFC and it was incredible speeds, very little data, we ate the whole data in one night, um, so the homeowners were not happy, uh, but it was incredible speeds at the time. Now again, HFC can suffer from a lot of problems that other copper networks can potentially have also, which is old cables. Now the main thing with uh, a cable or HFC is that it's much more shielded, so it should last longer. And when Telstra and uh, Optus put it in, 20 years ago, uh, they apparently took their time. Back in the day, they did things fairly well. So your pit will probably have a very good high quality thick cable uh, that leads into your home. And the only thing you might have to do, as I described in my last video, actually might be the actual connection at your wall. You might want to strip that and reattach a new pin uh, or point. Uh, and from there on, you might even get an even better connection. The last thing I want to talk about is power outages. When you connect your modem to this HFC network, you have to plug the modem into power. Obviously, if the power go goes down, the modem will not work. This is one of those connections that will not work when there's no power. Comparably, when somebody has fiber to the premises installed, they actually get an NBN battery, not by NBN, but they also install a battery to make sure that if your internet goes down, you get about half an hour of connectivity still able to use your internet because once you go from normal telephony lines to the HFC or the NBN, your normal telephone line will get removed. And if you remember, if you have a telephone, it's plugged into the walled socket, your telephone RJ45 socket, uh, it actually works even when the power is out. That won't happen anymore. So if people have medical devices or if there's an emergency and you want to make a call, one of the downsides here is, is that you won't be able to use it in a power outage unless you have fiber to the premises with a built-in battery. However, even if you were to get a power outage and get a battery connected to this modem, apparently it still won't work. So I looked it up on NBN's official website and they themselves said that. Unfortunately, there's no way to connect it. So mobiles and emergencies still might be your best choice. So in summary, HFC is definitely a good thing. You're gonna get speeds that are offered on the NBN plan. So 100 down, 40 up. In fact, you're gonna get better speeds than most fiber to the node people. Um, and in the future, if things go positively and NBN or the government decides to upgrade, you could potentially see speeds of up to 500. So HFC is a fantastic solution. Unfortunately, right now only 2 million people have the ability to connect and the rest of the 2 million people will potentially get connected, but 4 million homes is not really enough to make a huge dent in what we would call the third world version of internet in Australia. Friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has given you a bit more information about the HFC network. It's definitely better than fiber to node, but your experience may vary, but don't get scared when you hear that you're gonna get connected to it. It actually could work out much better. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think below. If you are connected to the HFC network, let me know in the comments below what speeds you're getting so everybody else can kind of see it, but I'm really interested in what the actual real world experiences uh, apart from what people say online they saying they get good speeds but let's see if there's people out there having terrible speeds because sometimes you're gonna suffer from the same problems that other people do with internet dropouts things like that you might end up having to change your ISP to a less popular one with more CVCs uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video